Avenir, is a global career guidance event, to empower students, and assist them, in identifying their ideal future career path. It, was conceptualized, by the Board of Directors, of Indian Schools, in Sultanate of Oman. The first Avenir, was organized at, Indian School Alma Bela, in the year 2018. In 2019, Indian School El Seeb, conducted the program. Indian School Musket, conducted the first virtual Avenir, in the year, 2020. Avenir 2021, was conducted virtually, by Indian School, Al Wadi Al Kabir. In 2022, the flagship school, in Oman. Indian School Bosher is all set to fly the flag higher by conducting Avenir 2022 in hybrid mode. Our impeccable planning, devoted team, unmatched resources guarantee a memorable event. The five day event will be held from Thursday, October 13, 2022, to Tuesday, October 18, 2022. Prominent achievers, educators, and industry experts will address the audience. Universities and educational institutes from different corners of the globe will present themselves to the audience of Avenir 2022. The event is open to all educational boards, including CBSE, ICSE, IGCSE, and IB. It will provide comprehensive career guidance to students to pursue their passions at national and international universities. Avenir 2022 guarantees a wealth of information and awareness on 21st century courses, scholarships, internships, and career placements. This event will assist students in discovering their ideal future career path. Let us gather together for this five days of excitement, effulgence, enlightenment, exploration, and exaltation. Let's join Avenir 2022 to discover you. wise man looks into space and he knows there are no limited dimensions good evening one and all let me take you all through the listings of what to expect in today's session it is the second session for this evening of the mega career guidance event avenue 2022 hashtag discover you hosted by indian school Bausha under the aegis of board of directors indian schools in oman the welcome address will be followed by a brief introduction and a video on our eminent speaker. Then we shall invite the esteemed speaker 
for his presentation. After the presentation, we shall request our guest speaker to answer a few questions raised by the attendees in the Q&A segment. The continuing session will be taken up by the university spokesperson. The detailing of the course is available and the process of admission will be explained in detail. We shall conclude this session with a vote of thanks. Space is for everybody. It's not just for a few people in science or math or for a selected group of astronauts. That's our new frontier out there. And it's everybody's business to know about space. Good evening, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls. Welcome to Avenir 2022. Hashtag Discover You, a global career guidance program launched by Indian School Bausha under the aegis of the Board of Directors of Indian Schools in Oman. On behalf of Indian School Bausha, I Aisha Fatim of Class 8. And I Aisha Mehran of Class 8. Pledge of expressing a profound gratitude to His Majesty Stan Haitham bin Tariq Al Said for the altruistic a noble benevolence showered on the Indian diaspora in the Sultanate of Oman. May the Almighty shower his choicest blessings on the majesty and may this nation experience peace and everlasting prosperity. We are happy to welcome all the students, parents and teachers for being a part of Avenue 2022. Hashtag discover you. Thank you one and all for your presence here this evening. It is with sheer joy and great pride that I take the task of introducing our speaker today, Dr. P. M. Siddhartha. Dr. P. M. Siddhartha is a retired senior scientist from the Space Application Center, ISRO, Ahmedabad. He has been a former faculty at the Center for Space Science and Technology Education in Asia and the Pacific, a center set up by United Nations. In 2001 to 2011, Sir joined iFi Technology, a leading R&D center in Toronto, Canada. Sir Siddhartha has been an associate editor at Shastra Kerala and is presently working as a senior fellow of the Kerala State Council for Science, Technology and Environment. We would like to request the audience to kindly post your queries in the chat box. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, please join me and listen to our speaker, Dr. P. M. Siddhartha, on his topic, Careers in the Space Research Sector. The platform is all yours, sir. Thank you very much. I hope uh, you can see me because uh, my screen seems to be a bit flickering. Uh, I don't know whether I, my picture is clear to you, all of you. A very good evening to every one of you participating today. Uh, I am from ISRO, the Indian Space Research Organization, now retired. Uh, there are six major space agencies in the world. NASA, the Russian space agency called Roscosmos, uh, China, European Space Agency, India and Japan. So I am quite proud to be here today because I represent an organization. I worked in an organization uh, which is one out of the six major agencies in the world. Uh, when I'm talking about space careers and space research, I'll be taking ISRO's achievements and major uh, programs as an example, but that equally applies to other agencies. Of course, NASA, Roscosmos, and the Chinese Space Agency are ahead of us. Uh, I'll be switch, uh, going uh, talking to you using a presentation. Uh, shall I switch on the presentation, please? Yes, sir. Please share. Hope you can see the the presentation. Yes, sir. It is. Yes, sir. Okay. It is visible. Uh, welcome all of you. Uh, 
I'll be talking on three main points, ISRO's major segments and activities, a quick look at space agencies the world over, and career opportunities and educational background required for a career in this area. Uh, I know students from eighth standard to 12th standard are participating. That's why I'm giving a little background about what the space research is. What is a space program? Basically, all of us require a satellite today. Without satellites, our day-to-day -day life may get stranded. That's why we need satellites and its applications. There are satellites for communication, earth observation, navigation, meteorology, interplanetary exploration, which we call also science missions. But to make the satellite, to uh, dump the satellite, just one Hello? 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 To launch the satellites into the orbit, we need rockets, which we call basically launch vehicles. Uh, all countries have their own launch vehicles, all these major six countries, and some minor countries too, which we will see later. And once the satellite is up in the space, we need certain ground stations, networks, communication links, and other things to uh, communicate with the satellite and also to receive the signals from them. Okay, coming to the launch vehicles, because we are starting from the ground, starting, India has got three major launch vehicles. In the picture, you will see six. But the first two, SLV and ASLV are no more used. The PSLV has launched, has been 54 times successfully. GSLV Mark II has been launched 10 times successfully out of the 14 launches and GSLV Mark III, three times successfully. The SSLV, small satellite launch vehicle, is uh, have been tried once, but hopefully it will enter the, <clears throat> uh, the uh, package of these rockets shortly. India has got two spaceports. One, the biggest one is called Satish Dhawan Space Center at Sri Harikota range. And there's a smaller one at the Tumba near Trivandrum in my state, Kerala. India has satellites me, for communication me, sir. for Insat Excuse and GSAT CD. Call me in the morning. Excuse me, sir. Could you change? It didn't change? Is it okay? Can you see now? Hello? Sir, it is in first slide now. Still in the first? Yes, sir. One second. Now it is in fifth. Okay, let me go back to the, I'm not able to see the full screen now. Okay, share. I'm sorry, it is stuck. No, pro no problem, sir. You can uh, ignore the slideshow. You can manage from this PPT itself. From the side, you can click the slides. Okay. 
So we have satellites for communication. Uh, we call it Insat and GSAT series for Earth observation, meteorology, navigation, science, astrophysics, and interplanetary missions, research and rescue, and various other things. And we have ground segments for all the above. We have a huge space, deep space network at, in a village near Bangalore. Uh, we have 17 communication satellites, 13 operational satellites. We have navigation satellite, seven navigation satellites, and we have two successful interplanetary missions called Chandrayaan-1 and Mars Orbiter mission, which is popularly known as Mangalyaan. A Chandrayaan-2 has, has failed, but it has another mission, 3, is planned. We have, we have an astronomical satellite, Astrosat, and a mission is going to be launched to study Sun called Aditya L1. We also have X-ray polarimeter satellite, which is quite complex to study the X-ray sources in the universe. Uh, as I told you, we have a India gateway to India Space Science Data Center called the Indian Space Science Data Center near Bangalore. Satellites can be used to see, say, almost everything happening on the surface of our Earth. That is called, that is the purpose of uh, remote sensing satellite or earth observing satellites. It can see flooding of the rivers, uh, shifting of the rivers, uh, reducing forest area, expanding urban area, and also cyclonic storms developing in the nearby sea and how fast and in which direction it is traveling towards the subcontinent. Uh, with a remote sensing satellite, we can pinpoint the place where it will hit the land. Thus, we can avoid proper, if you take a proper administrative measures, we can reduce the death toll and other losses. Now, ISRO is doing many other research, semi-cryogenic propulsion system, reusable launch vehicle, Gagan, safe landing application for airplanes, a human space program called Gagan Yarn, hypersonic air breathing vehicle, a lot of software hardware applications for users, a large number of spin offs are available also for technology transfer. Uh, in so far, we had 114 spacecraft missions, 84 launch missions, 13 student satellites, two re-entry missions, and we have launched 345 foreign satellites from 34 countries. Now, I'm I'm sorry that uh, you are not able to see the. A slide. Uh, here in the picture, I am showing the various space centers in India, which are potential places of employment for many of you. Now, out of the major centers, we have in Udhyapur one solar observatory where you can do uh, research in solar astronomy. And in Mount Abu, we have got so infrared observatory where you can study the the universe itself using infrared. In Ahmedabad, we have space application center, which deals with all the applications of space. Uh, nearly 3000 scientists and engineers are working there, uh, which is uh, one of the best place to work in uh, ISRO. In Bangalore, which is the headquarters of ISRO, we have so many uh, centers, New Space India Limited, a center which is manufacturing uh, rockets and satellites, which is yet to be fully full fledged, uh, not at full fledged, but will be shortly. We have UR Rao Satellite Center where India satellites are made. Uh, we do make satellites for other countries also. Then we have Electro Optical System Laboratory, which deals with the uh, 
electronics and the optical systems used in the remote sensing cameras and other thing. We have telemetry tracking and command center, which tracks and commands the satellites 24 seven. And we have centers of that in Mauritius, in space, in Bruni, in Karnikobar, and now one more place deep in the Pacific Ocean. In Hassan, we have got master control facility, which uh, it controls the INSAT satellites. Then we have the biggest center in Trivandrum, the Vikram Sarabhai Space Center, where nearly 10, 8,000 uh, scientists and engineers are working. We have liquid propulsion system center there and ISRO inertial systems. There is a good institute, the Indian Institute of Space Science and Technology also located in Trivandrum, which is at par with the Indian Institute of Technologies. But there, there are special courses on as astronautics and other things. Earlier, most of the students who pass out of the Indian Institute of Space Technology used to get absorbed in ISRO. Now, situation has slightly changed. So I cannot get, tell you the percentage of people who get employed there. Once more, I'm very sorry, I can't show you the slide. The countries with the most satellites are USA because of NASA, European Space Agency, Russia, China, India, and Japan. But many other countries are having smaller satellites, including the United Arab Republic. Now, coming to the investment, why I'm talking to you about the investment is where there is more investment in the space sector, there are more jobs also. And especially in the, uh, what you call, big places like NASA, Roscosmos, and ISRO and such place, the jobs are quite interesting, varied from extremely from pure science spectrum to the applied science and applied technology. Uh, the United States is the biggest investor and they have the capability to do uh, international coordination, launch capability, human space flight capability, and lunar soft landing capability. The same is the case with Russia and China. India do have the capability of uh, lunar, lunar orbiting, launch capability, and satellite capabilities. Japan, and other few other countries are like us, including the European Space Agency. There are Israel, Iran, United Arab Emirates, Australia, and few other countries which have rockets, but not yet entered the commercial market, or they do not have big rockets or launch vehicles like that of uh, SLV-3 of India. Now, coming to the background of the people working in the space sector, uh, who can work in the space centers? Basically, uh, most of the space centers are applied technology, applied science centers. Uh, for example, ISRO is like that. Anybody with a BE, BTEC, ME, MTEC, or PhD in engineering, it can be electronics and communication engineering, electrical, mechanical, chemical, structural, aeronautics, or aerospace, avionics, all these branches, people qualified in that, find jobs in major space centers. You can be also a master or a PhD in science, a doctorate in science, uh, preferably physics, chemistry, or mathematics. I'm not telling that those who have a doctorate in biology or biophysics, biochemistry, will not find job. No, they may find job, but the proportionally, there are less chances. Those who, the majority of them are from physics, chemistry, and mathematical background. There is a very potentially new area, astrobiology, which has come out, come up very recently, last 10 years perhaps. Uh, I used to tell to this, my students, whoever, when I'm talking to Indian students here, that if you are well qualified, you find a job in astrobiology. It need not be any particular subject, which is a bit exaggeration, but still anybody qualified, masters, doctorates, or an engineer in almost all subjects will find job there. Why? 
nearly 100 universities, NASA, part of ISRO, Roscosmos, all these major space agencies have teamed up to search for life outside the solar system. It is not SETI, SETI, search for extraterrestrial intelligence. No, uh, people are looking for potentially habitable planets outside our solar system. We call it exoplanets. Once exoplanets are found out, we have to do a lot more of things, whether there is air, there is water, whether life can sustain, whether life can sprout there, all these things. This is a field which is just developing. And people with the biology background, any other science background also will find opportunities there. Really an interesting and challenging area. Now, in conclusion, um, what I have to tell, uh, what I generally used to tell students are, they used to ask me, sir, to get into the ISRO, what I should study? There is nothing like a particular subject will take you directly into ISRO or NASA or into Roscosmos or anywhere. No, primarily, you should excel. So you should study very well, not marks, but knowledge too. You need a very solid knowledge you should be able to uh, link multiple subjects together, not just to specialize in one particular field. You should also study in the best institutes and universities. It is the people who are in the space sector, basically are from the top universities and institutes from the world. Now, Still, I will tell those who want to go into the field of space and related areas should study STEM, that is science, technology, engineering, and mathematics. Build up your knowledge. Don't be satisfied with getting the top marks alone, but build it. Build knowledge from various fields. Learn to link it together. Also, read a lot. Read deep and wide. You need a lot of knowledge to work in this area. It is not a very narrow uh, feat. You may have to know many things other than your specialized area. So be clear and work towards your goal. Remember, those who excel can make her his or his mark in any field. So while I'm a scientist from the space sector, I generally advise children that Study well, choose a field what you like, and if you really do well, you will excel in that field. Thank you very much. If you have any questions, I would like, I can answer them. That was an extraordinary and inspiring session by you, sir. Your creative and fun-filled session enlightened us and kept each one of us engaged. Now we would like to request our speaker, Dr. P.M. Siddhartha, to kindly answer a few queries put forth by the audience. May I now invite the moderator of the session, Mr. Shaiju Agustin, to pose some questions from the audience to you. Over to you, sir. Good evening, sir. Good evening. Uh, thank you so much, sir. The session was so interesting, exciting and informative. So we have received a lot of questions in our different social media platforms and we have shortlisted a few of them. Because of this time constraint, we would be addressing a few questions only now. So first of all, what was your big inspiration uh, to start a career in astrophysics? What actually uh, like made you reach there in ISRO? Um, in fact, when I was a kid, I never dreamed of joining ISRO or anything because at that time ISRO was a very fledgling organization. Space, space research itself was in the childish, uh, you know, boyhood or girlhood, I should say, not at matured. But when I was during my graduation, it was the time when India launched Aryabhata. So that was a big news. Of course, I have heard about Gagarin and Sputnik and everything, but we launching our own satellite was something really exciting. Then onwards, I what you call, partly I should say, dreamed of uh, joining ISRO, started collecting information about that. Then I knew that I was a basically physics student. So 
I liked the subject very much and I knew that physics will take me there. And thankfully, I reached there. And sir, actually, we have a very big audience who are actually just uh, like actually going through this age, like I mean, uh, grade 8, 9, 10, 11 and 12. Okay. So at that time, someone who wants to pursue a career in space uh, science, how can they actually reach there? Which course they should actually uh, select for maybe uh, grade 12th and even after that, how can they actually reach there? What should be that like? Uh, how can they plan themselves in terms of their studies? Basically, uh they should be a STEM student, that is science, technology, engineering, or mathematics. There is more potential for engineering and technology students than science students. The, as I told you during my talk, uh, space sector itself is an applied science technology sector. Uh, there is less pure science research happening there. Of course, NASA is doing a lot of pure science missions, no doubt. They are the pioneers and they are doing great work in uh, exploring the solar system, outside the solar system everywhere. Uh, but still, uh, the potential is for engineers and technology people. Mathematics people will find good job there because the satellite's trajectory design, uh, rocket design, rocket controlling, everything involves mathematics. So these are the areas where they should concentrate in, say, uh, 10th, 11th, and 12th. Go for engineering technology uh, in some very good institute. Uh, I always used to tell my Indian students, don't go to some institute because your dad has got money. No, you should go to those institute which recognize your brain, where you excel in the entrance, interviews and other thing. Come out well, study very well, concentrate and study well, and also build knowledge you can definitely reach one of the space agencies. Okay, so thank you so much. Thank you so much. I'm so sure that actually the parents and students who are actually watching this uh, session in the different uh, social media platforms and also in this webinar session, they must be surely inspired by your insightful words. Thank you so much, sir. Over to the MCs. Thank you, sir, for all your support and guidance given to the large audience by attending to their concerns so patiently during the course of the discussion. Time for us to move on to the second part of the session. The time to meet the university spokesperson, Ms. Randa Nasser, Regional Recruitment Manager at INTO University, Dubai, UAE. Ma'am has been in an orientation leader at AFS, Intercultural Programs in New York, United States, a national director a national director at a global visionary for academic services in Egypt, HEI, STEM program officer in Giza, Egypt, and alumni development coordinator in Egypt. Over to you, ma'am. Hello, thank you so much. I'm so happy to be here today talking about education in the US. 
Uh, so I was a U.S. alumna myself. So I went to the U.S. to do my studies. Um, I'm originally from Egypt. I now live in Dubai working for Into. And uh, Into is a pathway provider. So we offer those bridge years between high school and universities. We also do direct entry. So students can go through us directly to universities. So I'll talk about our U uh, U.S. portfolio today. Um, so uh, I know there are so many majors that uh, students don't know uh, how it works uh, in the US, for example, medicine, nursing, uh, psychology, things like that. Um, so I'll uh, share my screen. Um, let me share my screen so I can show you that presentation. Can you see my screen all right? Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am, we can see your. Thank you. Sorry, it's not working on the big screen. I don't know why that's not getting any bigger. Just uh, use this. Excuse me, ma'am. Can you kindly start the slideshow? Ah, uh, here. This. Okay. Um. Uh, so. Um. Basically, there are so many options for people to. Uh, go study, right? There are universities all over the world. Uh, so how students make that decision, which country to decide is a very difficult decision to make. And we understand that. And that's why we're here to support the students make the right decision for themselves. Uh, if we compare the number of people who won the Nobel Prize, 353 people are actually working or studying or living in the US. Uh, compared to 125 from the UK and 105 from Germany, who comes as a second and third place. Um, companies, the kind of opportunities that students get in the US, students can go and study in the US at Toyota, Google, P, Intel, uh, General Motors, uh, GE, General Electric, uh, United Nations, uh, Facebook, IBM, all these tech companies, uh, that are there to give the student the opportunity to work in a world leading organization. Um, while these companies also might have offices in other countries, but their headquarters are in the US. That's where they're well established. Um, also, when you study with us in the US, our partner universities have those partnerships uh, companies like, like IBM specifically, uh, where they help us actually um, make the curriculum. So our students, while they're studying, they're actually studying what IBM needs in their graduate students. By the time they graduate, that's a perfect uh, employee for IBM. So they're very happy to recruit them. Uh, the U.S. education system is very flexible when we compare it to other countries. So you can change your major anytime. You don't have to add any extra time. Uh, you can add a minor. You can add a specialization. You can do a double major. So you can do things that are very different, like music and economics, biology and uh, philosophy, uh, psychology and math, anything that you really like. You can do dual degrees. So a lot of universities offer specific degrees that are uh, dual degrees with other partnering uh, universities. So you will get a certificate from uh, St. Louis University and Georgetown University, for example. That's just uh, an example. It doesn't have to be real. <laughs> um, it, it doesn't have a fixed track. You're not forced to take a specific subject. So let's say you're not very strong at math and you want to study business and you want to do management. You don't really have to take the complicated math stuff. So that's another benefit of going to the US. The undergraduate system, uh, 
we have four years for your undergraduate degree. So your first year is like freshman year, sophomore year, junior year, and then senior year. Um, you can do core courses, you can do elective courses and free elective courses. Um, this is Oregon State University, our uh, champion uh, partner university that we have been working with uh, for over uh, 13 years now. Uh, we're very proud of this partnership. Actually, this is our uh, 15th year now. Yeah. Um, campus life. So at camp on campus, you will feel not just at home, but you will have everything. You're, you're gonna be studying at a place that you literally don't have to go anywhere else. On campus, you can live, you can learn, you can play, you can learn about other cultures, uh, which would help you if you would work for example in business and you would start your own company, you will have a product that you will sell uh, to the world. You will learn about how businesses run at other countries in the world. You will learn about how people think, how people see things, how people prioritize products. Uh, you can do laundry on campus. You can have all kinds of uh, fields. So basketball, uh, volleyball, uh, soccer, American football, so whatever sport you like, it's available at Oregon State University. And they play actually in uh, tier one, so uh, it's very competitive. You have to be a really good athlete to join the team. Um, this is comparing the US to the UK system a little bit. So in the UK, high school is 13 years, and then you do three years of undergraduate in the US. It's high school is 12 years and then you do four years uh, for your bachelor's. Uh, in the UK, postgraduate degrees are usually one year or nine months if, if we're talking academic uh, month. Uh, in the US, it's about at least one to two years. Uh, and if you do a graduate pathway, it's an extra time. So let's say most universities, most reputable universities that we work with would require students to have a 3.0 in their undergrad. So if you go for a university for your undergrad and then you don't finish with a 3.0, you're going to have to do a pre-master's or a graduate diploma, uh, as it's called in the UK. So some universities actually would offer you to do bachelor's and master's from day one. So now that you're a high school student, you can actually apply for your bachelor and master's combined. Um, the curriculum is very flexible when it comes to the US. Like I mentioned, you can do electives, double majors, major and minor. Uh, but for the UK, it's fixed for the most part. Uh, A-levels and IB. So if, um, if any of you is taking A-levels or doing some IB credit, these can help you get some waivers. So some of the classes that you'd be required to take would be waived for you and you'd be given credit for that. So how we calculate a US degree, we calculate it per credit hours. So you will need 120 credits, let's say to graduate. Uh, so it doesn't have to be a certain number of years. If you're a student, an international student in the US, you will have to do at least 12 credit hours per semester. So that means you have the flexibility for doing like 12 to 15. If you take a course that is like two credits or three credits, then you'll be doing at four, five, six subjects uh, per semester. So it's up to you. You can do a summer course and finish early, or you can just not do a summer course and finish in four years. Uh, this was about COVID and I guess we, this is behind us now, uh, but we're very supportive of our students. If um, for any reason, God forbid, you get sick at uh, Oregon State University, uh, we have someone at the reception 24 seven that you can reach out to. They would take you to the doctor, they will take care of you. Uh, it's a very positive, friendly environment. Uh, people are so lovely and caring. Um, doctor degree, a doctor degree in the US is a, actually a postgraduate degree. So you will have to do four years uh, pre-med, which is any undergrad uh, major. So you can do pre-med in 
arts or psychology or nursing or biology, uh, nuclear engineering, robotics, any kind uh, of major that you want, but you will have to also take the prerequisites for your MCAT exam. So when you finish those four years and you set for the MCAT, then you can go to medical school, which is then four years. After that, you're required to do a residency, which is the major, because when you finish your medical school, you're a general practitioner, so GP. So when you do your um, residency, you can do a specialization. Usually students do that in three years, and then it's up to you to do a fellowship or not. So if you want to be a cardiologist, for example, a heart surgeon, you will need to do three, four more years uh, in, in that. And then you get your license. So it's a, it's a very long route, but I like to make sure students are aware of that uh, in case you want to do medicine and you are not happy studying. That's what medicine is all about. So if you're not the kind of person who's going to be studying for the rest of your life, I have to say you'll have to choose a different major. Dentistry, very similar. So you will still have to do a bachelor's degree. Then you do the GAT test and then you do dental school for years. So again, eight year program. And then you have to pass the national board exam and the clinical exams. to Get your license. If you wanna be a pharmacist, pharmacists actually in the US have to have a, a doctorate degree, a PharmD degree. So you do your bachelor degree in four years, then you do your doctorate in three to four years. So it's bachelor right away, then PhD. A lot of universities in the US would let you do your PhD after your bachelor's and you don't have to do a master's degree. You can also get a bachelor degree in nursing. That's just four years, but you have to apply for a license. And actually, nurses do make a lot of money in the U.S. So if you want to go to the U.S., make a lot of money, that's a very good choice. Psychologist, you're in a bachelor degree in psychology, and then you take the graduate record, uh, exam. Then you do your master's or PhD or psych D to get your license. So you can't get a license to be a psychologist just with a bachelor's degree. A physical therapist you also have to have a bachelor's degree for years and then you take the graduate report exam then you do get a doctor or physical therapy degree program which is three years so again that's a very long route for students uh, same as dietitian so if you like um, nutrition and you want to be a dietitian you can get a bachelor degree and then you complete your accreditation internship, accredited internship, and then you pass the registration examination for dietitians and you get your license. Um, for students who are doing, um, for students who are doing uh, any STEM subject degree, so that's science, technology, engineering, or mathematics, you get three years after you graduate for um, to be able to work in the US and we call that OPT. If you're doing other subjects, let's say business, humanities, something that is not STEM uh, recognized, then you'll be uh, getting one year of OPT. Uh, I think I'm gonna end my conversation here. Just one more thing about Oregon, so I can allow people to ask questions, but just one more thing about Oregon State University is that right now we're offering scholarships up to $16,000. Their fees are not very expensive for to start with. It's about $36,000 a year, and you get up to $16,000 in scholarships. If you are looking for that scholarship, you will need to apply through one of our agents. And um, actually, Ramya from Uni Student uh, is a very good Asian, Asian very supportive. And uh, uh, she, she is going to be there for you when you want to apply for that scholarship. Any questions? Thank you very much for the informative session. And we're sure that the process of exploring and inquiring has begun in the minds of the students and parents. Over to the moderator. Good evening, ma'am. 
Good evening, sir. Ma'am, thank you so much. Actually, uh, the session was really interesting. It was really informative and uh, it must have actually helped so many people who are actually uh, trying to pursue a study uh, like uh, uh, courses there in US. Okay, ma'am, uh, we have received a lot of questions in different social media platforms and we have uh, shortlisted a few of them. First of all, ma'am, uh, you talked about like uh, in the US space system, changing major is major subject is possible. You told even like we can actually switch between music and biology. And ma'am, uh, like when you're changing it, do we have any criteria to meet with? Like uh, some entrance examination or something like that? Will there be something that sort of a thing? So in the US, you get to select the subject that you study. So every major has some required courses that you have to do. So let's say you want to do, uh, you want when you started university, you wanted to do a major in biology. And then at year two, you thought, oh, wait a second. What am I going to do with biology? That's too difficult. I want to change to music. Okay. So you have done the prerequisites for biology, but you haven't done the prerequisites for music. Right. So at that point, you have to go to your counselor at the university and ask, what are the prerequisites for a music major? They would give you the name courses and that's when, what you need to sign up for so if you change your major in year one two three even year four you can still graduate on, on time as long as you have done the prerequisites so let's say i'm not sure between engineering and mathematics which a lot of students are uh, thinking engineering business business computer science engineering you know you can do the prerequisites for both majors until you decide which one you want to pursue and which route you want to take uh, Ma'am, uh, and also we would like to actually know about the actuate placement rates there in uh, Oregon State University. Like uh, you talked about the campus placement and all, no? Like uh, how uh, like how would it be like the rate of placement and all? Can you speak about that? Uh, you mean the acceptance rate? Sorry, you're muted. Ma'am, actually uh, the placement, job placement. Career placement. Uh, job How much placement. Do? So our engineering and business schools have 100% placement. Uh, basically, these are the strongest majors that we do, uh, engineering and business. And that's where a lot of jobs in the U.S. are available, especially at Oregon State, because they have a target to uh, be uh, running on clean energy, renewable energy by 2030. So they have a lot of jobs for uh, people to work on that mission. Uh, also, their business school would help students start their own business from their first year at university. And then every class that they take, they help them develop that business. So they end up with a lot of businessmen and a lot of businesses going uh, in the U.S. And uh, we have three businesses that are now worth than one million dollar each. So students are becoming millionaires. <laughs> okay, ma'am. Thank you. And then, ma'am, actually... Uh, see, uh, you told us about the scholarships provided by Oregon State University, and you told us about Remy and all. Okay, so ma'am, uh, it will be better if you're explaining a little bit more about that so that the parents and students, they will benefit out of the scholarship programs. How can they secure it? What are the procedures? Sure. So the scholarships are offered by into Oregon State University. So you will have to apply on our website, uh, which is our, our own website. So don't just go directly to the Oregon State University website because um, we actually manage the regional scholarships. So we specialize in international students recruitment. Uh, so we make deals with universities to offer international students better scholarships than what they would normally offer to someone who knows already the university because it's a popular university in the US, very popular one. But 37,000 students go there so, uh, and they play really well in sports. So they're very popular. You know how US students know about all the sports and follow the sports and the universities are good when it comes to sports. But internationally, they're not that very known, especially from the Middle East. So we have a list of countries. It's based on where students are from, uh, actually. And uh, we care so much about diversity. We want all our campuses to be diverse. We want to have students from all over the world that will enrich the student's experience and uh, at the university. So based on basically nationality and the and your grades, so as long as you meet the, the grades for the scholarship, 
uh, which is usually a 3.0 average, which is not very high, right? So it's, it's mainly really um, your nationality as long as you're a good student. And where you reside, so yeah. <laughs> okay, ma'am, thank you. Thank you so much. Uh, over to them, please. Thank you very much for the insightful answers. Those who have queries can access the mobile app and the questions will be directly addressed. Over to you, Aisha. As we draw the end of this enriching session, I deem it my great privilege to propose the word of thanks. We extend our heartfelt thanks to our eminent speaker, Dr. P. Am Siddhartha, for all his words of motivation. Thank you, sir. We express our gratitude for the spokesperson, Ms. Randa Nasser of the INTO University for sharing the details and giving us an overview of the career guidance. Thank you, ma'am. A deeper sense of appreciation and gratitude to Chairman Dr. Sivakumar Manikim and the members on the Board of Directors, Indian Schools in Oman. Our heartfelt thanks to the President, Mr. Ajayin Poyara, and the members of Indian School Bausha's School Management Committee and the principal of the school, Dr. Bavesh Balerao. We request the participants to kindly fill in the feedback form posted in the chat window. Heartfelt thanks to our platinum sponsor, Jane Deemed to be University, Gold sponsor, D. Montfort, Silver sponsors, Dallas Baptist University, USA, Gray Matters, SP Jane School of Global Management, Sri Ramachandra Institute of Higher Education and Research and bronze sponsor, Middle East College and SP Jane School of Global Management, digital marketing partner, Spectrum and Trifoil, media partner, The Arabian Stories and other valued sponsors. Now let us watch a video of our valued sponsors. of this kind requires the coordination of a committed team. Thank you to the ISB team for making Avenir 2022 possible. Thank you to each and every teacher, student, parent for being a part of the session. Finding your passion is the key to your success. With these uplifting words, I Aisha Mehran. And I Aisha Fatem. Wish you all a glorious day ahead. Before we sign off, let me remind you of the upcoming sessions. The upcoming sessions scheduled for tomorrow, 16th October 2022. Online sessions for science will begin from 8.30 a.m. onwards. A gentle reminder for filling the feedback form. You can provide your feedback on the Avenir website, www.avenueoman.com. 
Every attendee who submits the feedback form will receive a digital certificate.